Hello everyone. So in this tutorial, we are going to take a high resolution sculpt with polypaint data on and we're going to convert it down to a low poly model with textures that we could perhaps use in a game. Now to do this, you will of course need a high poly sculpt with polypaint on to begin with. If you're wondering how I created this terrain specifically, then please watch the video in the description. Okay, so to get started, you're gonna to go to Subtool and you're gonna duplicate your Subtool and you're gonna call it Masked. Now, this part is optional, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask off all these little white areas and unsculpted parts of my model and I'm gonna separate them. I'm gonna hold down Control to select my mask pen and I'm gonna to go to Brush. I'm gonna go on Auto Masking and I'm gonna turn on Back Face Mask. Now, what that's gonna prevent from happening is when I'm sculpting under here, it's gonna stop it coming through the other side, okay, which can be a bit of a pain. So, I'm just gonna mask off all of these areas here. Okay, so once you're happy with that, you just wanna go down to where it says Split, and you wanna click on Split Masked Points, and that will create um, a separated mesh there. Here you are, this is what I don't want, so I'm just gonna delete that. So we're left with what we want to start taking down in polygon count. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call this Remeshed. We're going to go to Z plugin and we're going to go to Decimation Master and we're going to go to Pre-Process Current. Okay, now what that's going to do is that's going to scan the entire model for idle polygons that aren't really changing its shape. And once that's finished, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to Z plugin and you're going to want to go to... Uh, decimate current okay and boom you'll know once it's done it because your poly paint will disappear because of course the polygons have now changed now of course if I turn on wireframe it's still no good for topology so we've got to go ahead and retopologize this and we're going to use a procedural method to do this called Z remesher you've got the target polygon count here I'm going to set that to one so this is in thousands so that means 1000 now to begin with, I'm gonna put the adaptive size up to 90. Okay, so the adaptive size slider basically tells the algorithm how strict it wants to be on keeping the shape of your mesh. Okay, the trade-off is that it may not quite get down to that target count. So it's just finished up, let's have a look at it. Not bad at all, uh, it's kept its shape pretty well, but as you can see, it's still quite far off 1,000. It's actually at 11,000. I'm gonna go ahead and remesh again. So I wouldn't click undo at this point. I would go to keep creases. So that will try to keep these sharp edges. And now I would bring the adaptive size down. I'd bring it down to maybe 50 or 40. And I'll just click Z remesh again. And as you can see, that's just finished up. And it's done a fairly good job. So the next step is to begin the UV process. Now, if we were to automatically unwrap this straight away, um, it wouldn't do the best of jobs because there aren't any polygroups and the best way to do a procedural unwrap is to separate everything into polygroups. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go to polygroups and there's this wonderful button here called group by normals. Okay, so that's basically group by polygon angle, if you like. Now, it's got this little circle here that's on by default called Merge Groups with Similar Face Normals. You want to turn that off. And typically, I like to start with a face count around 25. So I'm just going to go Groups by Normals. And as you can see, uh, hasn't done a bad job. It's separated these quite nicely. A little funny around here, so I'm just going to hit Undo. I might go all the way up to, say, 30. Okay, so that's separated these reasonably you may not have to do it if your model doesn't have a lot of changing angles like mine does so you can skip that part if you want what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go to z plugin i'm going to go to uv master i'm going to turn off symmetry turn on polygroups and i'm going to click unwrap and it's just unwrapped them if i now go to uv map and i go to morph uv you will see that each one of those polygroups has been separated Okay, so the model is now effectively unwrapped. So the model now has UVs. The next step 
is to prepare the textures. So in order to do this, we need to start a process called projecting, which is effectively taking all of the data from the high poly sculpt and transferring it over to the low poly. Okay, so to start this, I'm just gonna unhide the poly sculpt underneath whilst keeping the low poly selected. And I'm gonna go down to project. I'm gonna click on project all with my scan distance still at 0 0.05. And it asks, do we want to project poly paint data as well? I'm gonna click yes. Okay, now if I just hide masked, you'll see that it has transferred some of that data onto the low poly. Now, the low poly currently doesn't have enough geometry to take on all of that data. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're slowly but surely gonna subdivide up this low poly model until the highest subdivision has a polygon count that's similar to the uh, original sculpt. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna go to geometry and I'm gonna hit divide, subdivide. Shortcut for that is control D. Again, I'm gonna unhide the masked subtool and I'm gonna go down to project all and I'm gonna project again. I'm gonna hit control D to subdivide and project all again. And as I'm going along, I'm slowly but surely gonna reduce this scan distance down a little. Control D, project all. So the low poly is currently uh, 153,000. If I unhide the sculpt, it's getting there, but it is still a little pixelated, okay? So I'm gonna subdivide it a couple more times and project. It's now up to 615,000. I'm at subdivision level five. I'm gonna divide it one more time to go up to six. And that's given me nearly two and a half million, which is what the original was. So I'm just gonna project one more time there, and this might take a while. Okay, so that's just finished up. I'm just gonna hide the masked subtool and inspect, and it's done a pretty decent job. If I go around my model, it looks virtually the same as the original sculpt. This is the original. And this is the remesh. Very, very similar. In effect now, this old masked high poly sculpt, the original terrain sculpt, they're all useless. It's this that we're gonna make use of. Now we're ready to export the textures out. Go to geometry, make sure you're on your highest subdivision layer so that you get the maximum texture quality. And also on UV map, you probably wanna start at 4K resolution. You can always reduce it later. You want to go down to texture map and you want to go to create new from poly paint. And once that's finished up, you'll see your poly painted UVs stored here. Just turn texture off, clone it so that it's docked and ready to be exported. Go to texture, flip vertically because ZBrush uses a different algorithm, so you have to flip it vertically, and go to export, and just export that out as a PNG. And to export the normal map, make sure you're at the lowest subdivision, go down to normal map, flip the green channel, and create normal map. Once that's finished, you'll see your normal map here. Press clone, so that it's docked and ready to be exported. Go to texture at the top, flip it vertically, and then export as a PNG. And then last but not least, you of course want to export out your lowest subdivision as a low poly model. So just go ahead and export that out as an object file. I'm gonna go over to 3ds Max and see how that looks now. Okay, so over in 3ds Max, just gonna go ahead and import that low poly object file. So I'm gonna import it as a single mesh and as an editable poly. 
and I'm going to press the plus icon and go to configure viewports and under display performance I'm going to make sure that my anti-aliasing quality is all the way up and my maximum texture maps are at 4096. I'm going to press M to open up my material editor. I'm going to drag and drop in a PBR metallic roughness and I'm going to drag and drop in those PNG textures that I just exported out from ZBrush. Put the normal into normal, color map into color, and we don't have a roughness map for now, so I'm just going to put that up to 0.8. And I'm going to assign the material to the selection. I'm just going to turn on high quality so we can get a realistic look. And there it is. So but just over 8 million triangles down to just under 5,000 triangles. That's pretty good going. That really wraps up everything we're going to go through on this tutorial. Obviously the textures here aren't finished. You would need to go into Substance Painter to push these a little further but that process is a great way to get started on a lot of your high poly models down to low poly models so i hope that helps you please subscribe for more content and uh, any questions drop them below thanks for watching